Um, hi, Paul Sackett, Good News Broadcast, speaking to Dr. Downey. Hi, Dr. How are you? Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me, Paul. I appreciate it. Okay, well, we are appreciated as well. We're going to talk about, actually, there's a website called uh, SkinCancer.org, mm -hmm. Skin Cancer Foundation with Johnson & Johnson, who we do many, many interviews. They have a great credo, okay, with uh, uh, always being concerned about uh, the people uh, for many years, and, uh, and they're good friends, good news. So you're with the American Board of Dermatology, right? Right, exactly. I'm board-certified dermatologist. I practice in New Jersey. And what Avino and the Skin Cancer Foundation are trying to do is they're trying to raise awareness that skin cancer is serious. So what we're doing is we're traveling around in a 38-foot RV across the country, and we're going to hit 50 different cities and 100 different locations. We are offering total free skin cancer screenings that will be donated by local dermatologists. And we hope to screen about 10,000 people, and the tour kicks off today. Great. Well, I think it's marvelous. You're where right now? I am in New York City right now, where the tour is kicking off down by Union Square, actually. Okay. Oh, geez. We'll be over there later. <laughs> are you there all day? Uh, we are here for another, I believe, hour right now, and then they're going to move it over to Union Square. Um, and people are going to come and get their screenings, and you don't actually need an appointment. You just can show up. So we're excited about that, and we're happy about that. And I, what I want your viewers to be aware of is that skin cancer is the most commonly diagnosed form of cancer here in the United States, with over a million cases being diagnosed every year. And that's a shame because it's also highly preventable and highly curable, especially if caught early. So what people need to be doing is they need to wear an SPF of 30 every day, rain or shine, January through December, regardless of their ethnicity. And people should be getting a total skin cancer screening once a year by a board-certified dermatologist. I agree with you 100%. We yeah. talk actually a lot about this, and uh, I get back to uh, I've heard people say twice a year my mother has skin cancer. And, uh, right, exactly. If you have a history of skin cancer, it should be twice a year. If you have a history, a personal history of melanoma, it, you know, it can be four times a year. It depends on what your personal history is. So that does always have to be taken into account. And that's no fun. And what you want to do is uh, also is, uh, you know, you, you should see someone's body, they say also, right? If, if you're like in a swimming pool and you see something, you might want to say something. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was in a grocery store one time and I had to tell a fellow that I was a board-certified dermatologist and I was very concerned about a lesion on his arm. But even more important than saying something to somebody else is looking at yourself. I mean, I tell people once a month when you get out the shower, just look in the mirror. If you see a mole that's changing, if you see something that's not healing or something that's growing or just anything that arouses your suspicions, anything that looks unusual, you should go to a board-certified dermatologist and get it checked out. And then people putting on sunblock is great, and that's like I said, an SPF of 30, but I want everybody to be aware that all sunscreens are not created equally. There are many that break down the minute you start to put them on your skin. And so what people need to do is look for ones that contain photostabilizing technology like that that's available in the Aveeno Continuous Protection line. And that's something where you get UVA protection. UVA rays are the ones that are responsible for the evil premature aging and wrinkling and sunspots and skin cancer. And UVB are skin cancer and burning. So it protects against both of those, which are the most important rays from the sun that we want to protect against, and that provides long-lasting protection. But even with long-lasting protection, it does need to be reapplied every two hours. Adeno does a lot of good things. We've actually done quite a few stories on Adeno and, uh, the, and our outreach to help uh, help people. I mean, right. Even with the, I even did it with the organic gardening. Right. <laughs> uh, that so right. Uh, we wanted them on that as well. I, we also did things with uh, Columbia Sportswear, too. Which right, is, exactly. Uh, and for... people, the Columbia Sportswear piece, um, they're also one of the sponsors. And people need to wear thicker woven clothing because the sun, wearing white is a myth. I mean, white actually attracts the sun. I mean, broad brimmed hats, thicker woven clothing, and um, actually sunglasses to protect your eyes are also quite critical. More than a million cases of diagnosis. Year, right? Exactly. It's a million cases that are diagnosed every single year. And last year for 2007, over 8,500 cases of melanoma resulted in deaths. So that's just a shame. And many of them are preventable if they're caught early. So that, that's just a shame. And depending, it doesn't matter really what company, you know, if your skin is darker than someone else, uh, it still affects. 
It affects everybody across the board, and people don't realize if they're olive or darker skin tone that they need to wear sunblock, and that is one of my passions, just increasing awareness in all races and all ethnicities and having people put sunblock on. I believe the statistic is only 33% of Americans wear sunscreen on somewhat of a regular basis. And then tons of people, I forget what it is, I think it's six to seven million people use tanning salons every year, and tanning salons actually emit 15 times the ultraviolet radiation of the sun. So therefore, they're 15 times more harmful than the sun's natural rays, which are already harmful enough, quite frankly. Uh-huh. I, I, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. That, that, that's a goodie. Mm -hmm. So sun tanning has uh, machines have that power in them? Uh, they have that power, and what tanning machines do is they predispose to skin cancer, they predispose to melanoma as well, and um, they predispose definitely to premature aging, to lines, to wrinkles, so, you know, all of that's not good. Uh -huh. No, it's not good at all. You're, uh, um, you, you're personally in, in your practice, have you seen that it change over the years, the amount of people coming to you? Absolutely. I believe back in 1935, long before I was born, um, the, the incidence was 1 in 1,500 uh, people in the United States would get a melanoma. Now it's down to 1 in 58 as of 2008. And by 2010, we're projecting that to be 1 in 50 people will be diagnosed with a malignant melanoma, which is just scary. So the incidence is increasing because of increased leisure time. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to decrease the incidence by raising awareness that skin cancer is out there, it exists, and it could take your life. So we want people to be aware of that and not be scared, but be aware um, and get themselves checked. How about uh, in, in my case, and then unfortunately probably a lot of people's case, like one out of the one said, um, and I'm bored it, okay? So I'm, I'm seeing new, new light. <laughs> how well is the hair out the sun? You know, it depends on how thick your hair is, quite frankly. So just like clothes, if it's like jeans, that protects you well. If it's a sweaty t-shirt, that doesn't protect you well at all. So if your hair is relatively thick, it can prevent and protect some. But, you know, your, your hair blows every single day. I mean, you can get skin cancers on your scalp. And if your hair is thinning, you're likely to get more skin cancers on your scalp. So you really need to be wearing sunblock on your face, on your scalp, on your ears, and on your neck in your case. In my case, I would be wearing it on my face, on my ears, and on my neck. You know, that's the most frequently exposed areas on a daily basis. Uh -huh. But uh, I'm vitamin D. Have you heard of that? Is that good for you? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that question. Digesting, you broke up a having little. vitamin D, eating vitamin D. Um, eating vitamin D is really the best way to get vitamin D or taking it in um, in a vitamin supplement. So you don't have to get your vitamin D from the sun. That's actually a fallacy. Okay, so that's good still. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, where are you going to be? What part are you going to square? Do you know? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, congratulations, and uh, uh, skincancer.org is the website. Exactly. Thank you very much, and have a great day, and thank you for having me on. Bye-bye now. All right. All right.